Snap and Twitter sort of dis disappointed. Overall, how are we doing with equities and earnings right now? So the bar was low going into earnings season, but that said, I think there are three main takeaways that we're hearing from the second quarter. You know, the first is that we saw real market accel acceleration downward in terms of demand trends and a softening really across the broad board. In the second quarter, um, we saw, you know, not just the early consumer cyclicals disappointing to the downside, which we heard in the first quarter, but we're now really starting to see that broaden out to the broader economy. You know, you mentioned the disappointment in earnings that we saw from Snapchat um, on Thursday, but you also saw negative earnings revisions lower from some of the consumer cyclicals, some of the industrials, some of the metals and mining company. And really what you're hearing a lot from corporates right now is that the consumer is, is weakening, but you're also starting to see business confidence also weaken. And you've started to see some of those advertiser dollars starting to get shrunk on the back of the fact that the demand environment just doesn't support it. The other, I think, key takeaway that you've started to see in the second quarter earnings season is inflation remains persistent. But what's new is that you're starting to see higher financing costs also start to really bite in terms of corporate profitability. And the interest rate increases that we've seen you know, on the back of the Fed raising rates has really started to hurt corporates in terms of their earnings profitability because it costs more now to finance. And the third, I think, key takeaway, and this is a real change in trend, is that the dollar strength is also starting to really impact the corporate profitability. We've seen the dollar rally about six and a half percent in the second quarter. That shaves about one and a half to two percent off of earnings. And you heard from corporates like Procter & Gamble, uh, Johnson & Johnson, as well as IBM, all to talk about, you know, a lower profitability ahead because of the, the higher dollar. And this isn't something that we've heard about, really talked about since 2016. So that's a new wrinkle in terms of the outlook for the second half. So, Bob, that was equal time for the equity side. But what about on the bond side? Let me add one other softening number. We had PMI numbers that came in on Friday that were softer as well. Right. I hear Erin, I understand everything she's saying. We have a completely different take on corporate America, and it starts with it's priced in. If you look at the start of the year, investment grade corporate bonds yielded somewhere around 2.4%. They're now yielding 4.6%. You look at high yield, it yielded under 5% at the start of the year. It's now yielding over 8%. So there's an awful lot of the bad news that Aaron talked about priced into the market. We look at those yields and we say this is the time to buy, particularly in high yield where you're being compensated for default rates that can go up to 6%. We look at where we think default rates are going to go. It's a much higher quality high yield bond market. 6% of it washed away in 2020. If you look at the amount in double B's, it's the highest ever, 53%. We think default rates only get up to 2.7%. The other thing we're noticing is that clients are returning to the bond market, especially corporate bonds. And it's because they have renewed confidence in the central banks. It started with the Fed 75 basis point increase, and it continued with the ECB's 50 basis point increase. So, Bob, I did see another bank that will go unnamed has a fund manager's report that came out this week that said this is the time to go into bonds, exactly what you just said. But, okay, so put that together with the Federal Reserve. We're going to hear from the FOMC this week. Is that saying we're thinking that they've gone as far as they're going to go or they're not going to go as far as we're thinking at least? Well, what it's telling us is the market is now fairly pricing in where they think the Fed should go. And the Fed is in sync with that. So we're talking about a Fed funds rate somewhere around 3.5% at year end. That's 200 basis points above where we are. If you go back to the start of the year, people were saying maybe the Fed will do one or two 25 basis point hikes. That was fantasy world. This is the real world. I think when I you pull... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go Bob. ahead, Aaron. Aaron, go ahead. No, I, I just want to go back to Bob's earlier point to saying that it was priced in, because when you look at consensus earnings estimates for the second half of the year, they're still up 
about 10% year on year. And even if you look at 2023 estimates, they're up about eight to 9% in terms of what market expectations are pricing in for next year. Now, the market right now in terms of the equity land is trading at about 16 times forward earnings, which is the average market multiple over the life cycle of the S&P 500. So we're trading at average market multiples, yet still pricing in pretty lofty earnings expectations for the second half of the year and 2023, which tells me that the market actually isn't fully priced for a recession at all. Certain segments of the market have certainly repriced lower and are pricing in, I think, more comfortable levels to start to dip your toe back in. But broadly think, speaking, I think the market is very mispriced for an oncoming recession. Remember, typically in recessions, we see EBITDA or earnings Earnings fall about 20% and EBITDA fall, you know, slightly less than that. But, but you know, th that would imply that we would have negative earnings over the next year, not positive earnings, which is, you know, currently consensus expectations. So, so we're, so we're, a lot further. We're, we're looking at the corporate bond market and we think that where credit spreads have gotten to, where yields and corporate credit had gotten to, it priced in about 75% probability of recession. The other thing that we're very mindful of is our job is not to predict the economy. Our job is to predict the markets. And we were looking at yields that had doubled in corporate credit. And we were looking at a lot of cash on the sidelines. And you were looking at pension funds who were discounting their liabilities either side of 7% that could go into the top of the capital structure by buying high yield debt and getting over 8%. Those are the flows that we're seeing returning to the market. It's just begun. So Aaron, Bob's put a number on the table, 75% chance of a recession. Within what period of time, Bob? Over the next 18 months. 18 months, what's your number? Yeah, I think that for a very mild recession, I think about 60% probability has been priced in. For a garden variety recession, I think only about 40% probability is priced in. I think that's more like what we're looking at over the next 12 months. And so the market's pricing in basically stagnating growth. I think it's going to be negative growth, which I think implies a that the market has fall you know further to reprice. On top of that, I think that yes, you you know you have seen juicy yields emerge in corporate credit right now. A lot of that has been just based on the fact that we've seen the cash free rate increase, you know, pretty significantly since the start of the year based on federal Fed's hikes. So we haven't really seen spread widening. When you look at that same measure of spread widening versus historical recessionary periods, it would imply that you really haven't seen the market price in a full recession in terms of how far far, far spreads typically widen. Okay. IG corporates, I think, is much more attractively valued. I think that there is a place yeah. you can start dipping your toe in, but not with respect to high yield. Bob, last word on this subject. Uh, high yield credit spread started the year at 300 basis points. They got to 600 basis points. That's a doubling. They're now 500 basis points over. That's 200 basis points. You look at the quality of the high yield market, it's difficult to even get to a 3% default rate in a moderate recession. Forget about a mild recession, a moderate recession. It's priced in.